wanted to get I wanted to get past I wanted to get past the politics and all that kind of stuff and I wanted to deal with the vaccine. So with that being said, I had somebody come and just represent the pro side of of of, of, of vaccines and somebody uh, that, that's not not that's a con and you know against vaccines, pro and con. And uh, this is full disclosure. This is my guy Will DJ Knowledge. Um, for those who are, for those who want to know where their donations are going, uh, by the way, if you want to donate, you can donate at our Dollar Sign Fat Man Scoop Show, or you can do donate to the show at PayPal, which is promo at dot com. It goes to ads. It goes to um, it goes to uh, 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 consulting. A bunch of different things is starting to grow the show. He happens to be the guy that, and I've known Will for many years, that does all my Instagram and Facebook ads. So he's the one that's running the program with me now to promote the ads and make sure all the Instagram ads and Facebook ads and all the, the ad sets are right and all that kind of stuff. So this is my guy. That's why I brought him on because I work with him closely on a daily basis with all of this stuff. And um, full disclosure, you took you you were in the clinical trials for the Moderna vaccine, and you also you also were. Um, you also took the vaccine. You took the first one, not the second one yet, right? Correct. Okay. So, you know, you are a pro-vaccine guy. Uh, a lot of people are not pro-vaccine. A lot of people are anti-vaccine. A lot of people are pro-vaccine. Today I said all I would do is ask questions and, and, and let people talk. So for those people who are out here that are not really interested in the vaccine or wanting to take the vaccine, what do you say? So, first and foremost, this isn't an equal topic. We got to make it clear from the beginning. Overwhelmingly, science is in favor of vaccines. There, there's really no debate with scientists. Um, the only debate is with non-scientists. So everything I'm going to say is ultimately deferring to science and experts, vaccine specialists, epidemiologists, people that specialize in this stuff. And that's why I was so interested in taking the, the, the vaccine in the first place and part of being part of that study. Because, um, you know, when it comes to doing vaccine work uh, or, or uh, vaccinating people, uh, there's an overwhelming case to be made for it. It saved billions of lives in the past, and it's going to save millions of, of lives going forward. It's only these people that are calling that into question that are causing more problems than it's solving, right? Okay, so for someone who does not believe in taking the vaccine, what do you say to them? What do you, what do you say to people who are... Well, well we all know, take that to, to, black so, people, who, to black people who are not as trusting of anything regarding vaccines, just not even, not even just the young kids, the people going back, back to... The Tuskegee experiment. Yeah, yeah, no, like I, that, for that, sure. That, that, that are not really trustworthy, that have no trust in the government to have their best interests at heart. What do you say to those people? So I would say, I mean, this vaccine is going to everybody. It's not just going to black people. It's not just going to white people. And actually, black people, you know, as we've seen in the statistics, are more vulnerable to COVID deaths. So I would say this is no one's getting a different vaccine here, right? Um, it's unfortunate that it's been pitted that way because historically you are correct. There are reasons for the black community to be mistrustful. But in this case, as in many cases, now science gets stuff wrong sometimes, but let's just look at the overall net effect of science. The net effect of vaccines has been to save millions of black people millions and millions of black people today around the world, you know, talk to an African in Africa about vaccines and they'll say you're crazy for not taking one because they've seen firsthand what happens if you don't get vaccinated. You can die of an array of diseases that we just take for granted in the United States because we're so, we just take vaccines for granted. So it's, it's unfortunate that it's being pitted that way as a black thing versus white because it's absolutely not that. Well, you know, there's a bunch of different things that you know, because they're, they're saying it on the, they're saying it on the, the, if you read the comments, they're saying, well, we don't know who, you know, where they're going to put it. They're going to put this vaccine here, this vaccine here. We don't know. Basically, it comes down to, if you read this, if you read this, um, if you just read the threads 
Um, and you can answer the threats. I'm just going. I'm going to step back and let you answer the threats. I, I, I don't see any of the. I, 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 people, I don't. Have, people have distrust about what happened in Africa. Um, people have distrust about a bunch of different things. But what I'm going to do, because I felt I, I wanted to be completely, um, I want to be completely on the level about this. What I want you to do, and I'm going to do partially. I'm going to do it because I got to go downstairs and get my um, my phone so I can charge it up. Okay, I mean, I'm just reading. Someone here says, you know, man, people dying from that vaccine. I would love to see these stats because the stats that I see, people are dying from COVID. Well, well, right? here's what I would like you to do. I would like, because people are in the comments and they're going to ask questions. Sure. What I'm going to do is just answer them. I'm going to step away and get my phone. Just answer them. What, okay, let me, let me see here. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing all these. So I, I, I'm looking at, I'm trying to see anything about uh, any questions here. Bro in a studio apartment preaching. What does that have to do with whether the vaccine is effective or not? Oh, so for side effects, so I did take the vaccine last week, so I actually was quite sick for about 24 hours, but I felt 100% after that. So the vaccine, if anyone wants to know how the technology works, it's actually pretty fascinating. So the concept of... mRNA is a part of, of your DNA. It's the messenger part that actually transcribes the DNA's uh, information. So what they found was they could actually replicate that part of a virus and still make it effective. And that's why it's incredibly safe. So that's a good question about someone saying that there, there are many strands. So that they are seeing evidence that it's there are some serious variants of it. So that's that's a question that remains to be seen. So far, the vaccine seems to be holding from the best information that I've read, but that might change. We're, we're dealing with a pandemic in real time, guys. So information changes and, and science is about finding answers and, and that's not always clean, right? And, and, and it's just so irresponsible for people to capitalize on that and, and try to create misinformation out of that and exploit people's fears. They're not sure yet. Some people, like some people, take vex. Some people get COVID and have little to no symptoms. Uh, usually, there's some sort of pre. Um, you know, uh, some people are predisposed to being more susceptible to it. If you're diabetic, I believe, overweight. There's there's a few other things, right? Um, and and people that so so somebody's saying if you're not predisposed. So a guy like me is pretty healthy. The chances of me dying from COVID are very low, but I might transmit it to someone who isn't healthy or may have a predisposition. So the whole idea here, guys, is that we have to reduce the spread because there are vulnerable people in our society, right? So I, I just think it's incredibly selfish for people that think that way. I mean, I'm a healthy guy. I run 10 miles a week. I uh, you know I lift weights. I, you know, there's no reason for me to fear it necessarily, but there are people in the community that do. So, so Bill Gates has no connection to the vaccine. He, he has been a philanthropist. He said that there is going to be a pandemic. And we've seen historically that pandemics happen every 100 years or so. Sure enough, this has happened. So this could have been much worse if we had been less prepared, but we really should have been more prepared than we were. It was, it was Donald Trump who, in essence, threw away the playbook that Obama created. Obama handled H1N1 and all, and all the threats to our country uh, during his presidency amazingly. He literally created a playbook that the Trump administration basically just ignored. Um, and, and, you know, that was awful of them to do because they really, if they would have followed Obama's playbook, we would have saved tens of thousands, maybe more. So I'm, I'm trying to go through these comments. They go, they go pretty quick. So you guys will just have to forgive me. I saw someone saying something about a health department. 
Uh, yeah, so, so for sure, taking care of your body matters. I'm a super healthy guy. I'm a vegan. I believe in a healthy diet for sure, but that's, that's no reason to say that another person, because they might not eat as well as me, is deserving to die of COVID. I mean, that's, that's pretty horrible. We should all be vaccinating because because there are vulnerable people. So so you know, people saying Bill Gates created the vaccine that's absolutely false. There's no, I, I would love to see some evidence for that because I haven't seen any. You know, Bill Gates has definitely been on the forefront of helping people prepare for the pandemic. We're lucky enough to live in a country that can prepare for it. There's many parts of the world that can't. So millions of people are going to die because they can't prepare for it. They they would love to get vaccines. I can't. Yeah. I can hear you now, yeah. I, I can hear you. So Okay. Okay, so so you know, I don't know. I mean sometimes when you talk about controversial subjects on Instagram, they they give you this. Um I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna give you five minutes to okay. to make people understand why you feel they should take the vaccine, and then I'm gonna open it up for about five minutes with the question mark I mean, box. So if you have questions, if you have questions for Will, you can do it. All you gotta do, that question mark uh, sign at the bottom bottom right hand of your Instagram, just type something in there and then I can push it up and he can answer it. So I'm just gonna let you do your thing, man. Anything you wanna talk about, anything you wanna say, go ahead and shoot, man. I mean, I think the facts speak for themselves. I mean, we've all had vaccines our entire lives, right? They've helped save billions of people on the planet Earth. We take for granted, we're so fortunate to live in a country that we just take that stuff for granted. We don't see things like the measles. We don't see things like diseases that people are dying of in a lot of parts of the world right now. And it's incredibly uh, disingenuous to say things that if you're not qualified to say them, that go against scientific consensus, it's not helping people. People are dying right now and we need to do our best to help people get the best information possible. I would love for someone to provide proof that Bill Gates created this virus, because I haven't seen any. Um, and I, don't think, I don't think that people are saying Bill Gates created the virus. There's a lot. I mean, I'm reading these con These people are accusing me of lying. Okay, no, and wait, I, would love, I, I would just love proof. DM me some proof, guys. DM me some proof that, from a credible source. I would love to see it. I think that people don't trust Bill Gates. That's fine. But you don't have to. It does. It's, this isn't about Bill Gates. This is about people's lives and health and safety, right? If, if you're gonna, if if you're gonna say I don't want to take a vaccine because of Bill Gates, and then you're gonna say it's not about Bill Gates, you, you know what I mean? It's 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 just disingenuous. We need to be spreading good information, right? Right. Okay. So as we and and I pr promised that I would not be an advocate for against this evening. I just said, I want people to come with their own. I want them to listen to both sides. I want you to tell people why they should do it. Give them a clear, a clear, a clear way to understand why they should do it and why they well, should do it. Me, well, me you just stop the spread. The spread is overwhelming hospitals and people are dying. When we take the vaccine, we stop the spread. So even though most of us won't die from it, we can spread it to people that can die or overwhelm our hospitals. So the sooner we all take the vaccine, the sooner we can all go back to a normal life. Things that we take for granted now because of vaccines that we all took as babies and kids are the reasons our societies are, being, are able to be as functional and as successful as they are, right? So the reason everything's had to stop is because we can't keep spreading the virus or hospitals get overwhelmed, people start dying. Okay, right. hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, stop that. So now there are some people have been dying for, for years. What makes you think it's going to stop with a vaccine? I mean, this is a vaccine for a specific virus. So that's what this is going to stop. 
I, I don't I don't understand what that how that's relevant. Of course, people every, every single one of us is going to die. It's a question of how are we going to die. So I mean, let's let's stick to the topic. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, let me see. We grab somebody else. Uh, there you go. How vaccine? So the one that I was part of the study for is ninety four percent. So that was a double blind study. So so just so people know what that means. That means when I took the vaccine back in August, I didn't know, and even the doctor that administered it did not know whether they were giving me the vaccine or not. It turns out I was part of a placebo. So what that means, so placebo is a really powerful effect. That's why Trump looked like a freaking fool when he talked about hydroxychloroquine. Because until you run double blind studies on something, you really can't tell its efficacy. So that's why Moderna and Pfizer and all these guys that's what took so much time is they took these double blind studies and subjects like me, I believe it was 30,000 that they, mm -hmm. that they had. And so I literally just got unblinded about a week ago and turned out I, I wasn't, uh, I was a placebo. So as a, as a way of saying, thank you, they gave me the vaccine. Turned out I, I got quite sick. So you remember scoop, like, you know, I, it leveled me for a good 24 hours. I, I was, it hit me pretty hard, but now, I'm vaccinated. I've got the antibodies. The second strand? Yeah, absolutely. Of course I will be. Oh, here's a question I have. They said that if you get the if you get the vaccine, if you get the vaccine, you could still you could still get sick and you could still give it to someone. You could still give the 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 virus to someone else, correct? So that's that's debatable. So they're just wait, they're they're just trying to collect data on that. They don't know. Um, the, the, what they're saying is it's probably not spreading and it's helping slow the spread. That's what they're saying. Like all the numbers are dropping. I don't know if you've been watching the numbers, but they've all been dropping. So the numbers, so, have, been, the numbers have been dropping based on based on everybody the the, the five point six million or the seven million people that have taken the vaccine so far. Well, I mean, it's a variety of factors, right? So it's it's people following protocols better. It's the vaccine. It's it's it, it could be a lot of factors. I, you know, again, I'm not a scientist. You know, I do have a background in statistics. So if someone showed me the numbers, I'd be better better able to understand them. Um, but we don't know at this point. Everything we're doing is learning in real time. I mean, they've gotten quite a few things wrong. Like famously, if you remember way back this time. If you remember this time last year, I was telling you we need to get masks, and the CDC was saying no, masks are not helpful. And I actually read studies from Asia. I was seeing what the scientists in Asia were saying, and I was looking at their track record in their countries and their infection rates. I was going, they're onto something there. So I thought the CDC was being disingenuous at the time. I didn't really. I I, I told my personal friends that, and, and and you remember when I told you, hey, we need to get in the mask business because the demand is going to explode. Just wait. You know, and right, after after that, and right after that, it started. It, it started booming. Like the, the business started booming like crazy. Um, exactly. So how how effective is vaccine in a percentage? So the Moderna one, I believe, is ninety four percent. Again, you know, just do a Google search. Um, so if the numbers are dropping, why recommend? I mean, this virus can still spread. So it's it's literally no time to stop when the numbers start dropping. We need to get rid of this virus. So the more uh, the, we need to double our efforts until the stats go so low that there's no threat of spread. This is something that experts know that once the population reaches a certain level that we can start slacking in, you know, masks and everything else. You know what's so funny? I'm going to tell you something. Ever since I started talking about this subject, my Instagram is glitching. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I kind of noticed that. Ever since I just started mentioning this entire subject, my Instagram is glitching. I can't, I can't, I can't get this off the screen. I can't do anything. You're, you're stuck. You're stuck on here. Like I don't see anything, but you froze it. Can I? I don't really. I, I don't see any comments now. It says comments, I off. comments off. I took the comments off. Hold on. Hold on. Really? I, I saw a few haters in there. Apparently. Uh... I don't know. A lot of these people know exactly how I live, apparently, but uh, <laughs> it's all okay. good. So, so hold on. Let me see if I can throw a cut, one or two more. I'm going to throw here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here we go. 
How, how often did they test his blood for immunity? That's, that's a good question. So they actually took a lot of tests on me. They, they, they kept constant um, monitoring uh, by phone. And if I had any issues, they took plenty of blood vials. I'm, I'm going to say a few dozen blood vials from me. So, so they were very interested in seeing everything. And again, that's, that's what they do with a double blind study. Okay, um, I want because I can't see you, but obviously everyone else can. I want you to I want you to give your pitch for the vaccine, why people should take it, why people should should you know should say, listen, I'll go down to my Walgreens or my pharmacy or wherever. Great. Go take for sure. Vaccine. Just just tell them, tell them, give them, give them. No, so, so the chances are most of your your fans and friends are healthy. They probably won't die of COVID or even get really sick from it. But there are people in our communities that will. So if you care about your community and especially vulnerable people in the African-American community, because African-American and poor people are dying by a way higher percentage from this. So if you care about the people in your community, do everything you can to get vaccinated because it helps stop the spread. Is there anything else you want to say about it? Um, I mean, this is this isn't a black or white thing. It's it's a humanity thing. It's uh, uh, somebody asked, are they constantly checking you because they're not sure of the outcome? Uh, well, they did monitor me. They still do. So they're I'm literally being monitored now. I actually just got a phone call today. So they do. They monitor me on a constant basis. They want information if anything goes wrong or or anything like that. So it's a it's a here in Nevada. Uh, they're like a satellite of, of Moderna that's been hired to do this. And the doctors and the nurses, they're amazing. Okay, what do you feel about those? What do you want to say to those who don't trust the government? Uh, boy, I, you know, vaccines have been a part of all of our lives. I, I don't know what to tell someone that lives in one of the most trustworthy countries in the world. I mean, me and you, Scoop, we've both seen the world. My, my family's from Syria, which has got one of the worst governments on the planet. You know, so we, I know exactly what a bad government is. And there, are there problems in the United States? Absolutely. Is there racism? Absolutely. Systemic racism that's awful in this country. But let's, let's separate the good from the bad. And there's a lot more good about the United States and the health system. As disorganized as it's been, it's done a pretty stand-up job, especially with the new president, to help stop the spread. So we, we want to... Uh, we want to build trust with people, man. Like there's, there's a lot more reasons to trust the United States government than there is to mistrust, you know? So, okay. Um, is there anything else you want to say? I think, I think we're good, man. I, I hope, I hope if, if anybody out there is fearful, man, like just understand we're all in this together, you know? I mean, it's, I, it, this is a, this is a tough role. Like I said, you know, what, you know, my stance on this, I'm not going to say, I'm not gonna say nothing tonight. I'm just gonna let people talk. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna push my side of it. I'm not gonna advocate. I'm gonna just let people talk and let them and let them do this. Initially, this was a this was me interviewing uh, Rizza Islam, and I am gonna interview him and just you know talk to him about his story and how he came to things and whatever. And then I'm gonna let him get into what he has to say. So I would like you to just sit and watch and, and give your thoughts on it For sure. if you choose to. I, absolutely. I, I would like to hear what he says, but I, w I would also urge you to have a doctor. You know, you need someone who's a medical expert. You know, to, I'm not one. All I can do is defer to experts. All I can say is what I'm saying is to the best of my knowledge what experts are saying. Uh, but and they're, they're, it's pretty easy to fact check on Google. It's pretty easy to you know look for credible websites, credible journalists that are saying stuff. There's a lot on the line. If, if, if Moderna or any of these vaccine companies get something wrong, there's billions and billions of dollars at stake. So, you know, you're, you know, people that saying it's about money, they're absolutely right. It is about money. So if they get it wrong, they're, they're liable for billions and billions of dollars. You know what I mean? Every, every, a lot of people have a lot at stake to get this right. Okay. So, got you, brother. Got you. Yeah. God bless. I'll just, Thanks, just, brother. Hang in the back and I'll talk to you in a little while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be sticking around. Uh, so let me see here. Let me, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to bring them on right now. And if, 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 my, if my Instagram shuts down, I'm just going to shut it up, shut it down, and come right back. So just give me a minute. Hold on. Tell them to hop in now. Uh-huh. Oh. 
point. So I'm going to ask him to come in right now. Um, when this is when when he comes on, and when he talks after he talks, I'm just going to take some time, and we're going to unpack everything that was said on the pro side and on the con side. And my thing is this: I'm not here today to I'm not here today to tell you what to do. I'm telling you, listen to both sides. Make the best, make the best decision for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. Do what you feel is right. Do what you feel is in your heart. Don't just follow somebody because they said something. Boom. Fucking go. I, 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 listen to both sides and go with what you go with what you want to go with. Period. End the story. What's happening, brother? My brother, my brother. How you feeling? <laughs> I'm doing well, my brother. How are you? All good, all good. So before I even get into all of this, all of this, because I've watched many of your videos, man. I mean, many of your videos. I've gone through a lot of them, and um, and this started with me. And when did you start really dropping videos, going hard on that? Maybe April of last year, maybe. Oh no, I've been on uh, videos with this. It's been since 2016, actually. Okay, wow, wow. So, so, so obviously you have. That, well, that, you know something. Let me, let me apologize. That's when I caught. So that's when, that's when I came to the table. Um, yeah. What made you start in 2016? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that, and I just kind of want to know a little bit about your background, get a backstory. But my first question is, what made you start digging in the vaccines and all of this stuff in the year 2016? Yes, sir. Well, I'll say this. Well, first, first of all, brother, I'm honored to be on the show. Um, you know, you being a legend and me being a dancer, growing up a dancer, you already know, brother, you, you're the legend, you, you know, when it comes to that. so your, your spirit is strong and it just, it, it lights us up, man. So I appreciate, you know, being requested to be on with you. That's the first thing. Thanks. Second thing, I became involved dealing with the information regarding uh, vaccines or inoculations and everything dealing with the field of medicine in that specific arena in 2015 early 2015 as a result of being reached out to by a woman by the name of Lucy Cole. This is an elderly Caucasian woman who reached out to me and said that I have some startling information about what is happening to your people in your community and what the government is doing to your people. This is an older white woman. She said, I have someone that I need you to speak to that has more information for you. So she had a woman by the name of Michelle Ford Call me, who was the founder of the Vaccine Injury Awareness League. Hold on, but so, before we get into that, do you want the comments on or off? Oh, it's, it's, it's good for me. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good for me. Okay. I know our, yeah, our people in here, brother, so we we all good. Trolls are not, the trolls will get handled. Trust me, the people going to handle that. So we all good. So, 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 why would they pick you? What, what was the reason they picked you to, <laughs> for this particular journey? Very good question. They actually told me that they had reached out to all of the black leaders that they could find. This is what they told me specifically. Um, of course, they don't know every black leader, they don't know every black group and organization, but they reached out to many of them, most of them. So when they reached out to me, they noticed that I'm very active in the community. I speak up for a lot of different things. Vaccines is one of them. The other thing is the abuses in the mental health field. The other thing is uh, the uh, sterilization programs, all of those things, and of course, inter-gang relations and uh, I mean, you name it. So many different things that I, that I fight for. However, they said, we can't get it in a newspaper. We can't get this information out on any mainstream media. We can't even get it out on any local media because the people are afraid to touch it. Mm -hmm. So they said, do you have a way to get it out? We know that you're in the Nation of Islam. Do you guys have a publication? Do you have a journal, a newspaper, something? So I said, yes, we do. And they gave me the knowledge, the information. And it, it hit me so hard, brother, because I also have been working with children who have autism. I'd say since about 2011, 2012, you know, so this is a, a personal thing too. So I'm listening to them and what they're telling me about certain vaccines and certain shots and we'll get into it. It hit me so hard because they gave me the documentation from the CDC, mm -hmm. from the Center for Disease Control being admitted by the senior lead scientist in the, in the Center for Disease Control. Mm -hmm. When they gave me this information, I, again, 
you know, when you hear about something so evil, not a conspiracy theory, but conspiracy documentation, actual facts, it hits you to the core because it's not a movie. Mm-hmm. It's not a joke. This is not a television show. It's reality. So for them to give me that, and they said, can you set up a meeting where we can bring some of the scientists to verify this so that you can bring this information to the nation's you know, uh, publication, which is the Final Call newspaper, mm-hmm. so you guys can get it out to the people? I said, absolutely. I set up a meeting. Within a week and a half, we met in Inglewood, California. They brought Dr. Brian Hooker. He's a very notable people, brother. Dr. Brian Hooker. They brought uh, Christine Danes. They brought, of course, Michelle Ford. They brought... Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was brought to this meeting. And when they brought, you know, I, I, I made this meeting happen. It's a point. I set it all up. When we sat in that room and they went over all this information, they did a full PowerPoint going over all the diagrams, information, the statistics, and what the MMR vaccine in particular, measles, mumps, rubella, was doing to black boys at the rate of 236% more than Caucasian boys, tears started falling from our eyes, brother, because we're like, they knew that this was going on? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he said, yes, they knew. They knew. The scientists knew. They sat down in front of us and played a two-hour audio phone conversation between Dr. Brian Hooker and Dr. William Thompson, who was the senior lead scientist over the Center for Disease Control's Vaccine Division. He recorded the phone calls with him. Is there, because is, of- is there, is there anywhere we can see this information? You too. YouTube, the conversation is up, from my understanding, it's on a few different channels. If they took those down, the recorded audio is on a documentary called Vaxxed, V-A-X-X-E-D. It's heavily documented. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you want to listen to that audio, that's the raw audio where he's talking about, I knew that this was happening. If we would have admitted this information at least 10 years earlier, we could have prevented at least 100,000 black boys from having autism. End quote. That's Dr. William Thompson. There's a lot more that he said. So that meeting happened. Once that meeting happened, they asked us, can we get it out to the people, mainly black people? Robert F. Kennedy Jr. named the different organizations, black organizations that he went to, who denied him. He named everybody from Reverend Al. He named National Action Network. He named Urban League. He went at all of them. And how they denied, not how they just didn't answer or respond. No, he went. You know, this is He's in the lineage of John F. Kennedy. Mm-hmm. He's in the family of Kennedy. Family. So he, he has some, some pull. So context. He, went, he has some context. He went to meet with them. They denied him. They didn't talk about it. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to promote it. So he said, is there any black leader that we can get this information to who will make it known to black people? And we said, yes, sir, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So we then flew <laughs> within about another week from L.A., to Chicago, where we met with the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was there. Uh, Eric Gladen, who's the producer of another documentary called Trace Amounts. I, I recommend everyone watch that. A billionaire by the name of Barry Siegel. Um, this is public knowledge. And that he was given all this information. Once he was given all this information, he brought it to the 20th year anniversary of the Million Man March. 10, 10, 15 at the steps or on the steps of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., live again in front of over 800,000 people, and it was streamed to over 4 billion people in over 42 countries through C-SPAN. Hmm. That's when it was really exposed to the world, not just the black community local, but black people all over the planet, and it started early 2015 with your brother. Okay, so now, you know, a lot of, a lot of, because I'm, I'm all I'm going to do, I, I really, today I promised that I wouldn't put my own personal views out there. However, I want to ask questions. People, first, first things first, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go through them in steps. Why, why do people always equate Bill Gates' name to everything that's going on? So my friend was on a, a couple of minutes ago, and, and you know, I, I had the, the comments on, and on the comments, you know, Bill Gates' name just kept coming up. Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Why are people why are people so gun ho on Bill Gates uh, 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 being a part of this and what and what, if he is you know what is the agenda what, what is the reasoning here? Very good question. The first thing is Bill Gates number one has a monopoly in the field of medicine. He has acquired a high level of influence while at the same time having no medical degrees. Mm-hmm. He's acquired a high level of influence while at the same time having virtually no experience in medicine. He has more influence than people with doctorate degrees in that same field. 
he is not a person by all intensive measures whatsoever who should be in a room or on a panel where medicine is being discussed, where clinical anything is being discussed, where chemistry or whatnot is being discussed, but because he's a billionaire, he has that level of influence. The other part is he is connected through his family, his grandfather and his father to the American Eugenics Society. Well, hold on, stop, stop, because it might be going too far for people. What gotcha. is the American <laughs> Eugenics Society for someone who might not know? Sure. Eugenics is two words combined. It's you, genes, meaning good stock, good genetics. Uh, it was a system created by Francis Galton, a Caucasian white man who basically said that the only pure human being is those who are blonde haired, blue eyes. Everybody else who's not blonde haired, blue eyes is life unworthy of living. They're feeble minded. These are people who are just going to contribute uh, negative things to society and they really shouldn't be here. They shouldn't exist. That system originated in America that was adopted later on by Adolf Hitler, the eugenic system, but it started here in America. Bill Gates's father was a part of the eugenics society. Many different colleges, including Yale, were a part of the eugenics society. California here heavily was involved through the eugenics society by sterilizing over 20,000 black and brown women here <clears throat> in the prisons that did not end until 2014. So eugenics is one main reason why he's so prominent because of his family's lineage. But the main reason why it's a negative is because the purpose of eugenics is to get rid of everyone who was not blonde haired and blue eyes on the earth mm -hmm. and one of the ways that they utilize getting rid of people is through vaccines through needles through inoculations or what is known as forced sterilization or indirect sterilization where the meaning you didn't know that you got injected with something that is preventing you from now being able to have children mm -hmm. all of this has happened so that's why um it's a problem <laughs> that he is up there and he's made it known on many occasions out of his own mouth like, 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 like where? Because yeah. when people hear this, I want you know, I want people to say, "I can go here and look at it." Absolutely, I can go here and look at it. So that if he said it out of his own mouth, then mm -hmm. you're going to see it. Absolutely. Well, I'll say the first thing is the, the famous TED talk that was done just a few years ago, where he specified that the world's population is growing and that it's heading up to nine or ten billion. Right now, we're over seven billion currently, mm -hmm. and he said, "Well." The world's problem is overpopulation. This is what he was talking about. He said, well, because of the carbon emissions, meaning we're breathing mm. in too much air, we're exhaling too much carbon, et cetera. That's what he said. And he said, but um, the population is growing, but if we do a good job on new vaccines, reproductive health care, we could lower that number by about 15%. He just made that very clear. He said this multiple times as far as reducing the population growth, preventing the population growth, et cetera. His organization, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, has sponsored vaccines that went and literally sterilized and made infertile women in Nairobi, Kenya. This is something everyone can look up, the tetanus experiment vaccine in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, where over 500,000 Kenyan women are now lo no longer able to have children because there was a infertility drug chemical, beta BCG, that was found by independent chemists within the Kenyan government, and they halted the injections because they found this drug that was in these needles. And they said, what is this? This is preventing women. This is going to prevent them from having babies. This is all verified information. Uh, the minister over in Kenya, they came out publicly on their national television, and they said, this is what we found in these shots. So this was we, can, we can find all this information. All of all this information is... Where, where is it readily available? It's public YouTube, you can, you can type in YouTube, tetanus vaccine, Bill Gates. Most of it is really out there. The articles are all over Google, which is interesting to know that they stay, have it up there as public. But it's been known. This is not the first time. It's not the second time, not the third. He and his organization have been a part of this for a very long time. They also created an organization by the name of Gavi, G-A-V-I, which stands for the Global Alliance for Vaccination and Immunization. And the purpose of that organization is to make sure that the entire planet is vaccinated. Not to make sure that the entire planet has food, water, clothing, or shelter, but that they're all given shots. So you have all these children who are hungry, who need housing, these children who are suffering from all these different issues, physically, mentally, etc. You don't have money to give them food and clothing and all of those things, but you have money to bring billions of dollars worth of vaccines to inject them. You see, so this is the 
the circumstance that we're dealing with. But when it comes to Bill Gates, all of that stuff is very well documented. His family being connected to the American Eugenic Society, him promoting the idea of sterilization and depopulation in particular is very well documented. That's not a conspiracy theory. This is it's out there, which is why people keep saying Bill Gates, because now people are finding out. And if you want to go back to the government documentation on it, there's a document called the National Security Study Memorandum 200, NSSM 200. That was written by Dr. Henry Kissinger, who was the 32nd Secretary of State mm -hmm. under President Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. Mm -hmm. And in that document, which has not been removed from government policy, it states, quote, depopulation should be the highest priority of U.S. foreign policy towards the third world, end quote. But it's not just for foreign and other governments. It's also domestically here for America as well. And if you look at they have already uh, pushed for abortion policies in over 13 countries that they outlined in that documentation and a whole lot more. So when America was going to go help certain countries, they told the officials there that if you want us to help you with food, aid, water, et cetera, a hurricane, whatever happens. So you need clothing, you need electricity. You have to adopt our abortion policies and put that abortion policy into your government policy in order for us to help you with food, water that you need. This is all documented, brother. This is what they've been doing for a very long time since the late 1970s. Mm -hmm. You know, so vaccines are just one avenue by which they utilize in order to go towards their genocidal depopulation efforts. It's just one way that they're pushing to do it. Is there, is there a better way in your mind that we could reach that lowering of the population? I mean, in China, they tell you you can only have a certain amount of kids and then that's it. That's right. You know, you can't be a baby mama with 10. You don't see baby mamas with 10 kids in, in China. I mean, I go to China all the time. You don't, you just don't see those kinds of things. That's a fact. What, what, what would be a better, what would be a better game plan in, in RISMA? Mm -hmm. As far as how to get rid of human beings, you're saying? Uh, no, just how to, how to bring this number down. Because what they're saying is by 2050, Yep. The people and the resources, it, it, we won't be able to make it. Is that correct? It's, that's, that's what the government is saying, which is not true. That's okay, what the government so what, is saying. In, in your mind, what do you believe is the truth? Number one, the truth is that there is a very small group of rich people at the top who are dying out their numbers. These are rich families, international bankers, etc. cetera. Uh, people whose livelihood is not excelling anymore. So they're getting older, but they do not want to lose control. They don't want to lose power. They want to maintain their money, their wealth, their influence. You know how it is with people who have power? What do they want? More power. You know, they want to maintain that control. They don't want to give it up to nobody. So with that type of momentum, what they're looking at is how can we maintain a steady level of control when it comes to a world that we took? And it's not just white people. The small group at the top is not just white people. You have some white, some Arab, some black, some Asian. You have people at the top who are doing their best to maintain control over the people, the hearts and the minds of the people at the expense of their own people. This is what we have to really understand. This is about power. This is about dominance. It's not just about color. The color is still there, but it's not just about that anymore. So they're trying to maintain their sovereignty and their influence. So what they're doing is looking at ways to control the population. And if they can no longer control the population, they must get rid of the majority of the population. Zbigniew Brzezinski, who used to work for President Jimmy Carter, he said, quote, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people than to physically kill a million people. Mm -hmm. But now, in today's time, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than it is to control, end quote. These are people in high levels of government who made these statements. By the way, that statement I just made, that's on YouTube, the audio, the, the script, uh, the, not the script, the uh, actual transcript, pardon me, is on plenty of articles. This is all documented information. People are still trying to figure out why are they not being charged with crimes against humanity from them, George Bush to Dr. Henry Kissinger, who's still alive. How, how are they still alive when these people are advocating for genocide? How are they still living? You know, so the, this is a very real thing that people have to understand. And they're trying to figure out, well, if they're trying to kill us, man, there's other ways they can do it. Yeah, they're doing chemicals in the water, chemicals in the food, chemicals in the air. They are encouraging you to abort your own children and you are going along with it. They're encouraging you to get hysterectomies, remove the ability to reproduce, period. They're encouraging men to get bisectomies, remove your ability 
to help to inject the seed to reproduce. No, period. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Now, I want to stop right there. Please do. As a man with a vasectomy, I have Come on. two kids, and I said, I can't do it again, sir. I, sir, I can't do this again, sir. I, it's not for me. Um, obviously, do you have kids, sir? Not yet. Okay, okay. okay. I definitely do want some. you something. dealt with a badass kid? Okay. <laughs> um, sir, some of the things that happened with my son, I cannot repeat here. Um, every, every kid from, if you can get your kid to 25, mm -hmm. that's when they realize the world. So, and I'll use my son as an example. My son was extremely problematic. Mm. He is now 25 years old. I had him when I was 25, so I just turned 50, right? So, exactly. so now at 25, he is seeing the world, he's seeing Wow, Dad! I didn't understand when you did this. You told me this was. You told me when I grew up, I was gonna understand that, bro. I just couldn't do it. Do it anymore. So for me, it was more of an issue. I don't want to be seventy-two running around behind a twenty-two-year-old. I'm not. I understand that. So I mean, I think that there's a time for vasectomy. However, it's not at twenty-one. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Some people are for that. Some people are against that. Um, so that's what that's my stance on vasectomy because I talk about my vasectomy, vasectomy on the show all the time. So I want to just give you a little understanding and clearance about why I did it. My personal choice, bro. I'm in the age group, man. I, I I don't want no grandkids in this house for ten years. I want to walk around naked for a good ten years, sir. <laughs> I, I want to understand. I, I feel I you. I want to walk around naked for a good ten years, sir. Can I That's do right. that? Can That's I have right. an opportunity for my but, but, but right. so there's a bunch of different things in the arsenal. Tell it uh, pushing pushing abortion, uh, uh vasectomies, hysterectomies, things like that. But don't you notice that the vasectomy and the hysterectomy are amongst the older population and not the younger people? It definitely is for the most part, but the direction is leaning more towards younger and younger. Hmm. Because they've been programmed, it's being promoted to them. Okay. Directly, like you said, you you did it because out of your own circumstance, like you said, that was your decision. It was your circumstance. However, what I'm saying is, prior to that even being an option to be done, mm -hmm. when it comes to black people, it was always the option because that was really what they wanted to do to us. Is if they found a problematic slave, mm -hmm. they wouldn't want him to continue his lineage anyway. They want to get rid of that dude. <laughs> That's just like pure. Right. Get rid of him. We're gonna buck break him and use him for certain jobs, and he was gonna kill him because right. he produced this bad slave or whatever. Right. But that's something that was encouraged. It was promoted to us heavily through Planned Parenthood, which prior to that, it was called the American Birth Control League. And the founders are eugenicists. So Margaret Sanger, who was an American eugenicist, mm -hmm. she was pushing for the population, et cetera, getting rid of the black and brown. Uh, she said, we do not want word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. She also said that Negroes are like human weeds and are to be exterminated. I mean, you can go down this list all day long, and she is the founder of Planned Parenthood. So that whole momentum, she's also the founder of the birth control pill. So all of this was created to prevent the numbers from growing of black and brown people primarily. It wasn't a way to help us. They didn't give a damn about your child being problematic, bro. They didn't give a damn about helping you to relieve your stress and prevent you from going through so much nonsense and all this stuff. It wasn't about caring about you. It was preventing you from being able to reproduce so that your seed would not take over the world that they stole from you in the first place. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose. So when I hear our people, I see them falling into a programmatic circumstance, how we've been indoctrinated into this thing to not love ourselves, to hate ourselves, etc., and some real life stuff that we all go through. I'm from Compton. I'm still here now. Mm -hmm. I'm, the youngest of, I'm the youngest of 10 children, bro. Mm -hmm. Think about you, you, you right in the middle of it. Come, come on, bro. So I see what they're doing. Like, it's, it is real on one hand. Like you said, what you go through, that's, that's real. You're not lying about that. That's real. Mm -hmm. I was that bad. I was that bad one. Right. Believe so it or not. You, your parents were like, <laughs> Man. Come on, bro. <laughs> so, so you understand that. You understand that. And now yeah. the older you turn away to when you turn in the nation of Islam, your parents are probably like, wait a minute, hold on. You were the one that was the terrible one. We, we, Come on, bro. You, but you have to get to a certain level, and once you realize what the world is, you you become right. supposed to come. But 
Teenagers are, are extremely problematic, and, and they don't come. They, they don't come with an owner's manual. So that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Doubling back, how does all of the how does the vaccine, in terms of 2020, 2021, <laughs> in your mind, play into everything that you're saying? Because when I caught on to you, you were saying, "Listen, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. They're going to do this." So. For people who might not, you know, there, there are people on here that are, you know, new or whatever, explain that to them so they can get an understanding of what you think in your mind. Absolutely. The first thing I'll say is I don't operate along my opinion. I operate along actual facts because the people need help. When they need solutions, bro, I'm right here in Compton. People need help. They don't need me to give an opinion. They need to know, okay, how can I make some money legally, bro? I got three children. I got a felony record. I can't get a job right now. How can you help me? Mm -hmm. I got like real, real talk, bro. What, what can I do? See, they need facts and information that will bring about solutions to help them out of their condition. So what I know for a fact is 2021, as a part of huh, the government documentation, it all goes along with time. It all goes along with time. They're on a timeline. They are, they have objectives and they all coincide with a timed momentum. So by the year, 2021 it was actually 2020 america was pushing to chip push to legalize the chipping of its citizens right now you have something called the real id act mm -hmm. i was telling people about back in 2018 and, and late 2017 that america is going to become more of a policed country where they're going to encourage you to inject yourself with a chip and they're going to sell it to you by saying hey you won't have to use credit cards you won't have to use money all of it is going to be in this chip well if it's all in this chip which means it's electronic who controls the system over the electronic chip. And if I don't go along with what they want me to do, they can just turn off my chip and I can no longer exist yes. in the electronic world. Money's gone, credit's gone. I can't do nothing. I can't buy groceries. I can't get in my house. That's the chipping mechanism that is heavily being utilized in America now. The majority of uh, Sweden right now runs on the RFID chip. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, businesses, food places, all that kind of stuff, they run on that and that's what they are bringing to America. Um, the, the population side of it and using vaccines and all of that is because time wise, they have been trying to prevent us from population growth since the mid 1900s and even prior to that. But really, since the early to mid 1900s and our numbers have grown too quickly, the United States Census Bureau said that by the year 2042, America is going to be a majority brown country. Let's be real here. This country was stolen by a group of really rough pedophile criminals who were kicked out of Europe and who wanted a land and territory of their own. So the founding fathers were some of the worst human beings from Europe. These are criminals from jail. People were killing people, raping, murdering people. And so they were given this land, took it, and they built a nation for themselves by taking it and robbing it from the original inhabitants. That's how this nation was established. They have it under their control. They never stole it with the intention to give it back. They never took it with the intention to bring it back to those who are the original owners. They never took it for people to be equal, to be free at all. So, yeah, but hold on. And, and yeah. the people, I'm sure, if you don't believe in his line of thought, you could go to him. I'm sure he will debate it down and put it down <laughs> for you. Because I'm sure there's people, oh, no, George Washington. I'm sure there's people yeah. on that note. I know. So, Listen, y'all can go to him. I'm sure he'll be, you'll be more than welcome for the smoke, won't you? Absolutely, bro. Okay. So, so Absolutely. So, you, you know, you said. These are just pieces. I got to, you know, lay the foundation okay. and connect the dots so I you understand. Understand. So, go ahead. Keep going. So, that, so, that's how it started. So, the point is, our population is becoming powerful. It is becoming extremely, not just black folk, brown folk, too. And now they're going to allow more uh, immigrants in which is going to take more and more and more power and control away from the dominant society, meaning white Caucasian people, the majority in this country. Um, a large percentage of them are not with that. They're, they're, they're not interested, you get what I'm saying, in being the minority. Now, this is, people can say whatever they want. I got a lot of white associates, Caucasian associates. Of course, I do lots of them. But the reality is the reality. They are not interested in becoming the minority in the country that was taken for them to be the majority. That is the truth. That's not a racist statement. That's a factual statement. So if we understand that, then you'll understand better why your population being eliminated is priority number one. Now, you understand. Now, and that, that's my government perspective more so. A, a pandemic was the, 
in your mind, a pandemic was the reason for this? Was the reason to uh, to execute this policy? Oh, government constantly uses biological warfare to get rid of populations. They do it constantly. You have what's called the United States Bioweapons Division Laboratory in Fort Detrick, Maryland, where they come up with, in laboratories, mixing and coming up with bacteria, coming up with viruses that actually can attack specific genetic codes. So they have specific things that can only attack black people, brown people, Mexicans. If they wanted to just attack women, they can genetically pattern it after that. It's, it's literally a programmable intelligence within viruses and bacteria and that, you know, what have you. Now, so they can do that. And they have done that. Now, let me ask you a question. What if they don't want to do it to the point, what if they do, see, the thing that I'm thinking about this is if you release something like this, you may inadvertently kill yourself. Definitely. That's the, now mind you, very beautiful point. That's why I said it's a very small group at the top orchestrating all this. It's not the majority of white people who are interested in this. They don't even know about this. The majority of anybody in this country are not aware of this. This is not something that the majority of Asians or blacks or no, or whites conjured up. We didn't conjure this up. The small group of evil people at the top who make up some of almost all of the demographics from black, brown, red, yellow, and white. In the middle, they came up and orchestrated this, and they don't give a damn about getting rid of some of their own, as long as they can maintain power and control. Very good example, brother. What happened in Nazi Germany was heavily pushed, sponsored, and funded by other Jewish people. Just like when it comes to the enslavement of us, some of our people helped to sell us into sure. slavery, but it was much different. But it was much different. They did not know it was going to be the dehumanizing circumstance. They thought it was going to be kind of like servitude, community service, like we had in Africa. They thought it was going to be like that. They didn't realize it was going to be the horror and the dehumanizing anarchy that 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 it you know later became. So that's why certain people tried to fight Queen, you know, Madame Tinubu, and you know a lot of people they fought the Europeans to get us back because they were like, this is not what we thought it was. So I had to just clear that point up. But people within their own group have constantly been used throughout history to destroy their own people. Mm. A few of them who want to get power, a few of them who want to get more money, a few of them who want to get a certain position or a title will and have sacrifice some of their own to do it. And that is a very painful reality that everyone has to look at. So a lot of white people don't give a damn about killing other white people, as long as those certain white people can maintain their position. Same thing with some black people, same thing with some Asians, Indians, you name it. It's really sad, but that's the reality. Now, 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 as this, as this whole thing, because I want you to tie it in to what's going on right now. Definitely. You know, because, because I've, watched a lot of your videos and I said, okay, I'm, okay, oh, and I'm, I'm looking at, I'm taking all this information. Where do you see, why, what, how are they going to use the vaccine and for what purpose? 2021, 2022, 2023, you talked about the chip. Um, honestly, I think that's the mark of the beast. Um, and that's another conversation later, later mm -hmm. on. But how would they, you know, what is this for? What is this for? And, and number two is, did you know that this was going to happen? Because you said real ID and all that stuff like this, like that. Did you see this coming for this purpose? The pandemic, you mean specifically? Yes. I absolutely, and per the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we're taught that history is most attractive and best rewarding in all research. So the most intelligent people study their history. If you know what was, you can understand what is, and you will be prepared for what is yet to come. Mm -hmm. So I looked at it. I said, okay, has America used biological warfare before? Absolutely. Have they used viruses to kill people? Definitely. Have they used bacteria? Have they put it in blankets? Have they put it in food and water? And yeah, they, they have. Like literally, they've done it all throughout history. Would they do it again? Of course, especially if they can do it in a way where the people will accept it in the name of help mm -hmm. in white coats. Your doctor, your nurse, the person who you trust. This is very, this is one-on-one, how you get rid of a people. This is this is literally textbook depopulation practices. This is what they do. So I knew it was going to happen. I just did not know like this. But I did know something very big was going to happen to where they were going to get the majority of the people to literally just bend right over and accept it. What did you think That's it was going to be? What did you think it was going to be? 
it was going to be something dealing with vaccines. I just didn't think it was going to be a pandemic. I was, I was thinking, okay, they're going to use vaccines. I know that. They're going to use shots. That's a, that's a guarantee given. That's what they have to do. But how are they going to get the people to take them? That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So my question is, we took measles, mumps, and rubella as kids. We took polio. We took all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Why is it different now to people? Why are people, people so distrusting today? When we took, you know, when we took that, when I went to Africa to perform, I had to take the back, I had to take whatever because I could, I had to take gang, fucking, um, fucking, I had to take all kinds of stuff, a uh, uh, yellow yep. fever. So, yep. so, why is it that this one vaccine and one situation has such a big um, target on its back? Beautiful question, brother. The first thing, and there's a number of components and factors to that. Number one, the people are now researching and studying this topic more now than they have ever done before in history. Mm -hmm. Number one. Okay. Number two, this has never been a vaccine in existence. So this is the type that has never been in existence before. So this is a completely different type of shot. And technically, if you want to be technical, it's not classified as a vaccine because it was rushed through under the emergency use authorization so therefore it is still in its experimental stages therefore you can't technically call it a vaccine mm -hmm. because it did not go through all the safety tests so it is legally classified as an experimental vaccine mm -hmm. that's a major point brother that we all got to get through our head experimental vaccine this was released in less than 10 months do you know the standard time for testing a vaccine uh, five, seven years maybe seven years minimum most of them go between 7 to 10, some 10 to 12, some 12 to 15. This was released in less than 11 months. Right. And it skipped human trials. And all of the ferrets who it was injected into died. Brother, so you're rushing something to give it to the human population in a way that has never been done before. In a shortest period of time that has never existed before. To a people using technology that has never been utilized before on a mass scale like this, and you're telling us we should trust it. The brother, the Tuskegee experiment ain't got nothing on this. Case in point, because I'm gonna go into you know why is it so much different? All of those points, but also as of right now, you have something called the VAERS system. The VAERS stands for Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. This is the system that is a part of the CDC. Mm -hmm. This is the system where all doctors, nurses, medical professionals are supposed to report to if any negative reactions happen as a result of injecting somebody with a shot. Anywhere in this country, you're supposed to report to that system. Do you know that as of right now, there have been over 501 deaths directly as a result of the COVID-19 vaccine from either Pfizer or Moderna, and 453 of those were from the United States alone? Did you know that? I don't know. I'm just saying. That's now, mind you, this is government. This is the government organization, the VAERS system. This is directly part of the Center for Disease Control. That's saying it's not a conspiracy theory. Over 501 people have now died directly connected to either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. How many people were involved in the Tuskegee experiment, brother? Less than 600. Mm -hmm. They died over a period of 40 years. Mm -hmm. Over 500 people have already died in a vaccine and been released in, what, for four months. Right. So we already passed the Tuskegee experiment. This is the COVID experiment. This is what people got to get to their head. It's not a joke here. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's alarming because you are embracing something from the same government that issued the Tuskegee experiment under the organization that later turned into what is now the CDC. Same organizations, same groups, but you're telling me they changed their purpose all of a sudden when it comes to the people. They, they care about us so very much, right? Let me go to the next point on that. So the people are researching more now than ever. This vaccine was tested the shortest of any vaccine in history, which is why but, it's experimental. What, yeah. So people could say that happened because it's such an emergency, a worldwide emergency. We have the technology now. There's a million things that they could say that we would be able absolutely. To and I'll, I'll counter this point with this. With uh, I'll counter that point with this point. So it's okay if I rush through this chemical concoction and I put virtually whatever. I want to put in it and I'm going to inject it into anybody and hey, whatever happens, happens. Some people might get helped. Some people might die. Some people might uh, suffer from what is called uh, Bell's palsy or idiopathic facial paralysis. Plenty of people have been saying that. Uh, they specified the FDA warned and said, look out for Bell's palsy 
after injection. Mm -hmm. So if all these things are happening, and let me continue to go further from there, you're telling me that just because in your mind, you're saying a pandemic, okay, more people are dying from heart attacks, more people are dying from cancer, more people are dying from strokes, more people are dying from all of the different, well, diabetes, more people are dying from asthma, more people are dying from all of these things, but you're not bringing no money towards those things. You're not making it mandatory to exercise. You're not making it mandatory to take vitamins and minerals. You're not making it mandatory to get vitamin D and go out in the sun every day. You're not making it mandatory to drink more water. You're not removing the chemicals from the pharmaceutically induced lack thereof of food, fast food within the neighborhoods of the inner cities, creating the pre-existing conditions that the COVID reacts with and then makes people die. You're not taking money to invest organic nothing in the inner city neighborhoods or communities. But all of a sudden, you want to rush through this chemical concoction and say, listen, if it kills some people, hey, we're trying to help the people. So it may help some, it may kill others. That is bull crap. So the people sign off on being experimented on. The emergency use authorization, brother, allows for these companies to not be sued. Do you know that you cannot sue Pfizer sue. or Moderna? Yes, you can't sue them. So wait a minute. So you're telling me you're willing to take that risk because of an exaggerated business drug marketing mm -hmm. plot. Now, I'm not saying Corona doesn't exist. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the CDC even made it very clear that 94%, it has a 95, and some said nine, some parts of the, the study later on said 97 to 99% survival rate. They even said that 94% of those who died from COVID did not die from COVID alone, but they died from COVID along with pre-existing medical conditions, people who had diabetes and asthma and cancers, things that they were already dealing with that they were, were leaning towards death already. But once they got COVID, these people I were already- They, had, they already had one hand in the grave. They already had in there. They were, they were what's called immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. Their immune system was already weak. Their body was already leaning towards that. So if you get this one thing that attacks my upper respiratory system, hardens the mucus, I can't really breathe. On top of me already going through this, of course I'm going to die. But you told the world that it was just COVID. You lied. Then the CDC said 94% died with pre-existing conditions and only 6% of those who died died from COVID alone. Brother, come on. Come on. So now, you, now you're not telling nobody to do anything with their health, their nutrition, their diet. You're just saying, take this vaccine that you can't sue us for if we inject it into you, that it's not necessarily fully tested, uh, that we're just rushing through. We didn't really do human trials. We didn't really do a full testing phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase three alone takes between two to three years, bro. So you didn't do no phases. Now you're just injecting into the people and saying, hey, we're doing it because we want to help some of you. But we're going to take your child away from you if you don't take it. Oh, we're also going to make you lose your job. We're going to lay you off if you don't take it. Oh, yeah, you can't travel if you don't take it, but we care about you. No, you're not going to be able to go to certain restaurants, businesses. You're not going to be able to go to the grocery store if you don't take it. But we do care about you because we want to inject it into you. You're a goddamn liar. Okay, so so here's yeah. the thing. So here's the thing. We are now we are there. It's it, where are we going from here in your estimation? Because I hear all yep. those things. If you can, okay. So let, let, let's let's because this is the thing that was on my mind. Man. Yes, sir. If you can't get, let's take black people out the picture. Let's just take let's take so black. Sure. People. Throw black people over, right? Don't throw minorities mm -hmm. over. Man. Fuck it. Minorities over mm -hmm. the shoulder, right? Like, whatever. <laughs> minorities gotcha. over the shoulder, right? Whatever. Right. If you can't get the Trump Republican, this is our goddamn country, crowd <laughs> to put on masks, Come how on. are you going to get them to put on to take a vaccine? That's number Come on. one. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two is, isn't there other effective ways of getting this into our body other than a vaccine? Beautiful questions, brother. Beautiful. This is why I love doing this interview with you. Number one, when it comes to the MAGA machine, Make America Great Again, that whole loyal group of roughly 80 to 90 million loyal followers of Donald Trump, not of the president, of Donald Trump. Uh, if they choose not to wear masks, that's one thing. But if their president says, take the shot, they're going to take it. It's, you see what I'm saying? They follow him. Now, although early on in early of 2020 last year, Dr. Fauci said, don't wear masks. That's not good. You shouldn't do it. Mid 2020, he says, wear masks. December of 2020, he says, wear masks, wear them more frequently. You're going to have to wear them more frequently. It may become mandatory in certain areas. 
just two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, he said, I think we should actually double mask. I think that'll work. That may help too. Early on, he said, well, you know, uh, socially distancing six feet. Two months after that, I believe it was MIT. They said 12 to 13 feet. Later on after that, they said, well, actually, it's airborne. It's not just in the physical droplets from spit and things of that nature. So you're going to have to mask. Then you're going to have to put a barrier over your head. Make sure you wash your hands every hour, uh, which is destroying and killing the actual uh, skin of the epidermis. But that's fine because we should make sure we're washing our hands every day anyway. That's what we should be doing if we want to keep good hygiene. Social distance. Make sure uh, you're not around virtually anybody. They continue to change it because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They don't know how to fix it. They don't know what to do. And this is what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said. The scientists of this world, specifically this government, but this world, cannot fix this. It has gotten away from them. That's the, that's the, that's the, that was going to be my next question. Yes. Is it just a situation where perhaps because if this is really a plan to control and execute policy, the people, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't be out of the control of the people who are trying to do it. So is it, is well, that's, it really yeah, that's, that's not, right now? No, no, the people who are in control are not the ones that we're seeing on television. They're not the ones in control. The ones in control are the ones in the back. Mm -hmm. See, you never look at the government, the figurehead in the front. Okay, like the president is not the one who controls this government. He's a figurehead. He's a post turtle. He's the one you're supposed to, you're trying to, they want to convince you to look at. But the government that really runs all of it is what is known as the shadow government mm -hmm. or the government behind the government. Those who you don't see, who push the buttons, who make the calls, who check right, off so all that. What I'm saying is, has it got out of control of everyone? Is this something that's mm -hmm. now got out of control? Because now you hear this, and do this, and do this, and do this, and 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 this. Has it got to the point where it's, or is that a confusion tactic or has it literally got out of just the control of the people who were controlled? The ones who thought they were in control, including these chemists who were behind the making of the vaccine, et cetera, and all that, it got out of their control. God, of course, is in control of everything for those who believe in God. So that's why a lot of the majority of people who had it have overcome it and they're healthier now as a result, right? So, but the getting out of control, another mutant strain, is now coming from Europe, is what they said. So there's a new strain that just came from there. That's gotten out of their control. So those who were thinking they had control over it, yes, they got out of their control. When it comes to us, the original people who follow along with the natural health guys that we've had existing for thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of years, we, so far, from what I've seen, and scientists have done tons of different studies on everything from vitamin C to vitamin D, and what that does, zinc, all of these different things. Donald Trump himself, when he got COVID, this is what you don't see heavily promoted. They put him on a mixture, a concoction of solutions. Within that solution, that concoction of solutions were three things, vitamin D, high levels of vitamin C, and zinc. Why are you not telling people that? Because those are things that you cannot make a large investment in on because you have invested billions of dollars in these vaccines that will bring a return on your investment. But you tell people to take vitamin C, therefore a person will be cured. You won't have a patient. You won't make no money. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's where the pharmaceutical line comes in. And another question you asked prior to that was dealing with, are there other ways that we can get the virus or the anything? You know, can you get it in your body without being ejected? Mm -hmm. Two differences, brother. Uh, the you vaccine. Can, is there another way that, mm -hmm. because there, everybody's pushing vaccine, but is there another yep. way that they can do this without, without, Use it in, uh, Injection. Absolutely. Well, the first thing, they can do it in any way they want to. They, they've traditionally used liquids, drops. They've done that as a solution. They've done the injection. Uh, they can even do it in a patch if they wanted to, you know, a water-soluble patch, kind of like the nicotine patch where it dissolves through the epidermis. In a way that we would not know. That's what I'm asking. Oh, of course. I was going there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was going to, the same way they put the chemicals in the water, the food, the air, they, yes, they can, if they so chose to do it that way, they can absolutely do it. it. Matter of fact, I wouldn't doubt that they are already planning to do it that way because they're looking at what is called vaccine hesitancy. These are, these are the medical terms that they use, vaccine hesitancy, meaning the people are hesitant, rightfully so. You haven't given black folks or people in this country not one reason as to why we should trust you where shots are concerned. You literally sterilized millions of people. You got rid of millions of people using the same 
apparatus, the same vehicle, the same so-called solution that you are now trying to foist upon us and say that this is this time, guys, is going to help you. We promise. All right. Hey, hey, hey. we know we did, we did you know, all those times before and it was horrible. But this time, hey, it's going to help you. all what, what are you talking about? We can't trust you. A Jewish person would not trust the Nazi government under Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich, bro. So why should a black person trust the United States government who pushed the Tuskegee experiment, the Nigeria experiment, the Nairobi, Kenya experiment, the forced eugenics sterilization experiments, the Philadelphia prison experiments, the California prison experiments? Brother, Tuskegee is small compared to what they have done. So we have no record, evidence to justify trusting them. But we have a mountain of evidence to justify why we should not trust them. And I'll say the, the, your, last, your last point, your question dealing with, is there a way where they can give it to us without us knowing? All those things, yes, but I also want to make this very quick point regarding the immune system. Injecting is different than ingesting. The majority of our immune system, our immunity, is through the gut, our stomach, our large intestines, small intestines. Our digestive system is the majority of our immune system. over 75% of the immune system takes place in the stomach and the gut. Mm. So that's why when you do, for example, when you eat something or drink something, that's why your body, if you get sick, your body's able to fight it off much more because it went through the standard system of security that your body has. So your body has these juices, it has these white blood cells, and all these, these different things where it sees what is known as a foreign pathogen, bacteria, virus, whatever you may, may have you come in, it recognizes this is not normal. I don't know what this is. This is going to harm my body. So it destroys it and it gets rid of it through urine, you know, spit, uh, feces, etc. Et That's ingestion that's how we naturally are immune you're breathing in viruses right now and so am i the only reason why we're alive is not because of vaccines is because we have what's called a natural innate immune system our immunity over the our span of life has become built stronger and stronger by coming into contact with viruses naturally but if you inject when you inject you bypass your body's natural security system it's like you got a club bouncer and you got that cat who goes through the back door where mm -hmm. nobody's secure. Right. He get in and he go, you know, jump on stage. Now I got to get through the stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that is what a virus does. When you inject, you bypass the body security. And that is why it has tons of damaging effects. That is not the natural way to boost the immunity. A, they all know this. Scientists know this. The honest chemists, virologists, epidemiologists, pathologists, they all will tell you vaccinating is not the natural way to boost immunity. It's not. The natural way is to come into contact with it naturally. Air, you know, breathing in, eating, whatever. That's the natural way. You know how it used to be in the 90s and the 80s where people had chicken pot parties? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know how it was, bro? You know, little, okay, little Ray Ray got chicken pots. Hey, y'all, let's, let's go hang out real quick, little Ray Ray. You bring your children over there it's because you get chicken pots, build your immune system, boom, you overcome it, now your immune system stronger. It knows about it, it has the cells, bam, it recognizes it. What they're they trying to do, to do now? That. They tried to have COVID parties, but it didn't work out too good. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, a little different. They become a little more advanced, but that's but that's the point. And so, when it comes to us, the overall solution is we must increase in our nutrition. Got to increase in our nutrition, bro. We have been bombarded with so many chemicals through the fast food, through the air, through the water, all of this stuff, and it has damaged our immune system so much to where we have to work overtime now to bring it back up, and that's the ultimate solution. And of course, you know, um, just do the standard things that we're supposed to do, but we have to work overtime when it comes to actually boosting our immune system. And that has been the most successful way that all these doctors have seen. So now, you know, that's, now, that's the solution. I was on the road, so a couple of different things. I had coronavirus early. I was in China in December of 2012. I mean, 2019. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I had coronavirus when they didn't even know what it was. That's right. Uh, I got back out on the road February. I went through having it caught for a month and a half, back on the road in February. I was on the road with Maya, okay? Maya, Maya the singer, Best of Me and all that with Jay-Z. The only yep. people that I, during this whole coronavirus thing, that I never saw break one sweat was Maya and people from the Nation of Islam. Bro, say that again. And, 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 say that again, I said, brother. I said, wait a minute. Nobody from the nation of Islam died? Like, what, what happened? What is this? <laughs> why, in your estimation, why is that? Number one, brother, diet, lifestyle, what we eat, what we drink. 
in the nation of Islam. And let me make it clear, as of now, we do have a few members who have passed away, primarily because of uh, age, primarily it was, it was age, or diet, primarily. Not a lot, though, not many, but we have, see, one is enough. Mm -hmm. But we've had a number of them who have passed away, so I don't want to make it seem like we're just totally invincible. However, the vast majority know we have not. Uh, passed away. We we're very strong because of what we follow, which is how to eat to live, book one and two by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We eat one meal a day. We stay away from the majority of fried foods. We stay away from the dairy for the majority. We stay away from heavy red meats. You know, we fast three days out of every month. We drink lots of water. We take our vitamins, minerals. We exercise. We eat that good old navy bean soup. Y'all be laughing at the bean pie, not realizing it has over eighty nutrients in it, bro. Skin be looking good. We healthy. Right. Like, come on. <laughs> right, so right. that's, you're, you know. No, 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 no bumps, no nothing. Clear skin. That's what the women Come on, like. bro. That's another story. It's about the lady. Right, right. <laughs> the women love it. The that's women what, love that's it. That's what it is. You, you it's the diet, man. And Maya, from my understanding, sisters are vegan, from my understanding. Right. Yes. So she, the majority of what she eats is fruits, vegetables. Listen, Maya, Maya, I'll tell you what happened. I was on tour with during this time. Um... I have I'm I'm a follower of Dr. Satan. So oh, yeah. something happened oh, with my foot. Was a member of the Nation of Islam, by the way. Huh? Dr. Sami used to be a member of the Nation of Islam, brother. Right? So so that so you know. that makes perfect sense. So I, I had an operation and I was supposed to heal in thirteen weeks. When I took the Dr. Sami diet, I healed in two weeks. It's another story. Yeah. So I know that I know the teachings, I know everything, I know the diet, I lost fifty pounds in, in thirty two days, the whole thing. So I, we're out on the road, and they're saying coronavirus, coronavirus. It's not to the point where they're shutting the clubs down. We're, we're about a week away from that. They shut the last show down, and that was it. Maya, when we were watching the thing on the thing, on, on, the, on the thing, and we were in the craft services, and I went to grab a cookie and some pie and stuff like that, and the coronavirus thing was on the screen. Maya looked at me and was like, and she got this look that she has with me where she, she knows that I know about Dr. Sandy and she know I know better. So she looked at me like, you know, the, the look was like, like a teacher. I put yeah. it down and I immediately went to the juicer. There you go. I lost 55 pounds when I came back, you know, within a span of six weeks. I lost that, I, you know, I dropped everything very healthy you know, brought everything down. Um, but I noticed that her, vegans, Nation of Islam, certain people are not suffering as much as everybody else. And nobody's saying anything about your diet and vitamin D and vitamin C and vitamin things like that. What do, before I, before, because I'm going to step away and I'm just going to let you talk to people and answer questions on, on the, um, I'm going to let you answer comments. Two things, two questions I want to have before I do that. Number one, if we don't take this vaccine, what do you see as the, the next steps? Do you see, do you see it's like, oh, you know, celebrities say, take the vaccine, it's cool. And then what's the next step if you don't take it? And what's the next step if you don't take it? What, what, where do you see this going in terms of lineage? Beautiful question, brother. The first thing is they've already uh, pushed out the agenda, the rollout of certain celebrities who they've already targeted, contacted the managers, offered them money to promote it. I've talked to many artists myself personally who turned it down. They called me and they said, Reeves, listen, I was told by my manager that I was offered this amount of money from this company, and all I had to do was say that I was going to take the shot even if I wasn't going to take it, or all I had to do was say, trust the science, y'all, take the shot, or all I have to do is say, man, you know what, I think it is a good idea to take the shot. I think I might be doing that, even if they weren't going to take it. They're being paid. They're being offered money to promote it, even if they're not going to take it themselves. That's called false advertising. But why would you have to pay them to promote something that's supposedly good for them? You don't need to pay no celebrity to say that vitamin C is good for them. You don't need to pay no celebrity to say that drinking water is healthy. You don't need to pay no celebrity to say that exercising is good for you. But you need to pay them to say, take this shot that you said was safe, effective, is going to help you, is going to knock out the virus. Let me just make it very clear, by the way. Dr. Fauci said that taking the shot will not prevent you from spreading corona. He also said that taking the shot 
will not prevent you from transferring the virus to somebody else. He so also said that, yeah, I want you to go ahead. No, no, finish it, finish it, finish it. Okay. He also said that taking the shot is not just in one shot. You're going to take multiple. And after that, you still have to wear your mask. You still have to wear your uh, your gloves or you still have to do social distancing. You still have to do all of this. So what are we taking this for? Because you're not certain that it's going to help at all. You said we're not sure. We're not positive. If you're not certain that what you're injecting me with is going to help, but you're certain that it's not going to help, you're certain that it's not going to prevent me from getting the, getting the virus, you're certain that it's not going to prevent me from spreading it, but you're telling me to keep doing all the same things. What you're saying is that this is an experimental stage and we don't have all the data yet. That is the literal definition of an experiment. Now, you're conducting something without having the actual data to validate your claims and therefore you're telling the people, hey, just wait for it. So you're going to keep injecting these people? with something that is questionable and then telling us it's safe at the same time? Okay, oh, so, now, so now, doubling back, so you think celebrities might be the first thing. What's gonna happen if yep. you don't listen to the celebrities? What's gonna happen if that don't? Like, what is, what is, what do you Beautiful. think the, 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 what do you think it's gonna be? How do you think the rollout? is? Celebrities are gonna promote it. A lot of them are going to lose a large percentage of their fan base when it comes to that topic. Plies did that and he lost a chunk of people because he promoted something that he don't know what the hell he's talking about. And I love our brother for the good work that he does. I love all of our brothers and sisters who do good work. However, at this time, is the wrong time for celebrities, people with large numbers, followings, lots of money and influence to make the decision to spread false information where medicine and health are concerned and is concerned because you're spreading information that is going to cause people to make decisions that may potentially damage them for the rest of their life. And that is not okay. Some people say, well, people are dying from COVID. Check it again. The, the majority of people who died did not die from COVID by itself. No, they were already dealing with things physically. That's where you got to have it in full context. Don't do that. That's the fear. So you're pushing fear and say, I want to be around for my children. I want to be around for, wait a minute. You got cancer, bro. You got diabetes, bro. You got all this and all that, but you're not saying that about that. When the likelihood of you dying from that is much higher than dying from COVID. So what are you talking about? Here? Stop using the fear. Stop lying to the people to push something that is a money maker. So if celebrities push it, they're going to lose a percentage of their influence over the people. But they're also going to get a lot of people who follow them just because they like the celebrity who they're following. A lot of people are going to make the decision to do it. After the celebrities don't work, which right now they ain't working, especially in the black community, they're going to go. They're already going to the religious side. The religious factor, the pastors, the ministers, and all of that, a lot of them are in between. Some of them are bought off already. Others are saying, well, wait a minute, I stand with God. I can't trust this. This is not of God. A rabbi, brother, was just disowned by his own synagogue, Rabbi, rabbi Ashraf, I believe, over in New York, because he said that this vaccine, Pfizer and Moderna, is potentially causing infertility and sterility. This is going to sterilize people. That rabbi just got disowned by his people. Another rabbi, uh, Rabbi Daniel over in Israel, said that potentially these shots can cause people to turn gay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just letting you know. That, 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 I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know what they're saying. This is what they're saying, right? So in the spiritual world, even that ain't working too much because a lot of them are saying, hold on, we, we're not, we don't trust that. We follow God. We ain't trusting this government who has a record of doing horrible things to the people. We can't trust you. So they're going from the celebrities who they're trying to lean on, mainly the rappers, singers, you know, people like that, people who pop in. And if they don't work, they're leaning towards the spiritual realm. If the spiritual leaders are not vibing with it, they're going to push to indirectly mandate it, meaning they're going to push to make it mandatory indirectly, meaning you can't come here if you don't get it. You can't do this if you don't get it. Now, there's a big difference. So you have a government mandate, you have a private business mandate. Planes and stuff like that, that's private business. That's airline by airline. Most airlines ain't about to do that. They're not going to say you need to take this or you can't fly because they know a large percentage of their people are not going to take it and they're going to lose so much money. So that's not going to happen. But they are coming out with apps, two apps, one from a company called Clear, the other one from the company called IBM that will check in to show you whether if you took it or not. It's going to shine green if you were vaccinated, shine red if you were not vaccinated. This is a technological way of going. Now, what, into does that, what does that do? Because I have, I, I have clear. I've had, I had clear in nineteen ninety five because I'm a, mm -hmm. a world traveler. I don't have it now, but 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 it's there. I have TSA pre check. What is that going to yep. do if you have green, red? All, all the green and red is saying actually is 
You took a vaccine and we don't even know if it's going to work. Precisely. <laughs> but that's, I'm just letting you know where it's going. Because you see what you're asking where it's going. So I'm showing you where it's going point by point here. So the private business mandate is business by business where due to their own fear, you know, and what they know or don't know, they're going to make it mandatory in order for you to come into this business. You got to take this. By the way, this is also the next point of where it's going to go is the states are going to be fighting against the federal government. So people don't realize is the 50 states have their own constitution. So therefore, the 50 states are their own sovereign nations within the umbrella of the United States. Right. So you have certain governors right now not with this. Atlanta ain't never closed from my understanding. Did the, Atlanta numbers, did the numbers ever go crazy in Atlanta? Because I was in Atlanta and they act like there's no such thing as COVID. Exactly. And in Atlanta, the numbers did not go crazy. But I will say this. This is something that I analyzed. The CDC is based in Atlanta. The highest concentration of AIDS is in Atlanta. The CDC does experiments. So the CDC allowing Atlanta to be open in my uh, researcher's diagnosis and analysis is them conducting an experiment to see what they can do if they allow the people to just congregate and be around each other for as long as possible. What can that do? Mm -hmm. I speak with whistleblowers and scientists who are around and who deal with CDC, Emory, things of that nature, and they have given me data dealing with Tyler Perry, for example, where they were told to make sure to promote that Tyler Perry is going to be on this show questioning these so these two so-called doctors about a week before it was even promoted to the public. They were told at the CDC and at Emory to make sure you are promoted, even if you're not going to take it. Staff at Emory and at the CDC are not taking these shots, bro. Plenty of them are not taking it themselves. Plenty of them. They're fighting with the higher ups in their own organization mm -hmm. because they're saying we know the science here. This, we are the ones that produce the data. And this data demonstrates that we can't trust this. This is not safe, period. We're not taking this. And so that so it's happening all over the place inside of these, these organizations as well. So it's going to collapse. And then it's going to get to a point where the people are going to have to rise up and either reject this or completely bow down and accept this. Wisconsin right now, some of the old folks' homes in Wisconsin are now being sued by some of the staff because they told them either you take these shots or you lose your job. Mm -hmm. And they all, they hired lawyers. And the lawyers yeah. are saying it's un that's unconstitutional. Not, yeah, that's it's not, illegal, it's unconstitutional. You can't, that's, that's called coercion. That falls under Title 18, Subsection 5 of the United States Code, which is domestic terrorism. You forcing me to do this. Like, wait a minute, you gonna force me to get a shot? That I can't sue you for. That's not tested. You see what I'm saying? And that's, so it's tricky. But at the same time, you're removing the right to choose. And that is the problem because now you're moving, you're leaning into Nazi Germany type of government. Right. Now, you have other governments across the world, which I'm not going to mention, that you either get down or you lay down. I Big think time. This is going to be, for America, I think this is going to be around for a, a, a longer time. In Australia, they have pretty much, Australia and New Zealand have pretty much ended the, the COVID with no vaccine. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. Absolutely. So why They're not is the only America, one. Why is America the main one pushing the vaccine? There are other countries, there are other countries, like I, I'm telling you, like Australia, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I know people down there, I do business down there, I'm, I'm very popular down there. And I'm hearing they're not pushing the vaccine, and they've already. But they had a, they had a, they, the the government got a little draconian. So they were like, "Yo, yeah. you're not doing this. You're not doing anybody who do this, this, and this, and this. That's if right. You go five blocks from your house, it's this. If you go know this, this, and this. That's right. <laughs> However, they fix it, right? Mm -hmm. With those dr draconian measures. But I don't hear America doing none of that. All I hear is vaccine. Why is that? Number one, we'll go back to what we said earlier. The ultimate agenda when we brought up Bill Gates is depopulation. That's the ultimate agenda. The majority of science, scientists, chemists, biologists, pathologists, epidemiologists, just because you're a scientist does not mean you know government policy. They don't know the policies of their own government. You work for them, but you don't know them. I had to speak to some of these scientists and I asked them, do you know about the National Security Study Memorandum 200? Do you know about Global 2000? 
Do you know about the United States Bioweapons Division in Fort Detrick, Maryland? Do you know? Some of them said, okay, I know about Fort Detrick. Yes, we do have the Bioweapons Division where we create biological weapons. Yes, we do. I said, okay, now, do you know about any of those other things? I said, if you don't know your government's policy that is above your head, then you will be utilized as a pawn in their agenda and for their agenda. So that's the overall agenda, is depopulation getting rid of, as Minister Farrakhan said, per the documentation, three to five billion people. America only has roughly 328 million people within her borders. And the planet has roughly over 7.2, 7.5 billion. So again, depopulation is the ultimate agenda. But America also is literally one of the only nations, <laughs> the only two countries in, in the world who promote drugs directly to their public, directly to their citizens, is America and New Zealand. They're the only two countries on, the, on earth that promote on television, directly to the population, ask your doctor about this drug. Take this drug. You can't do that because in good science, in good sense of science and chemistry, everyone's chemistry is different. So what's, what may work for me won't work for you. I can't promote that all of y'all should take this because tons of things may happen. You all may have different reactions and then it may help me. So I can't do that. That's called marketing, brother. And in well, science, the FDA labels vaccines as a drug. So what you're doing is you're promoting drugs to the people. And I will say this, and I, I, I didn't want, I promised myself I, I wanted to be very impartial. Um, I have, my business is, my office is in London, England. My business mm -hmm. office. I'm an international mm -hmm. artist. I do eight, 80 countries a year. So my, all my staff is in London. All my staff is English. Like, mm -hmm. hello, how are you feeling, sir? Uh, <laughs> you know, all my people That's are right. English. My, my assistant, my role manager, all of them. And they all said, when they come here, like they come here, I bring them here, whatever, we have business, they, they come, and they're like, why are there so many, why is the half of the commercials drugs? Come on, man. They're like, yo, we don't see this shit. What the, what, what is this? Yes. So, I mean, that is the one thing I, 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 I didn't want to be, I want to be completely impartial, but that is the one thing, America promotes drugs. And you're promoting drugs with side effects that Come might on. be worse than what I'm dealing with. Listen, if, Come on. I, I, listen, <laughs> if you say that I, if I'm taking this, if I'm taking this uh, uh, drug for, I'm taking Viagra, but the side <laughs> effects is that I'm going to be blind. Wait a hold on now, sir. Come on, hold brother. On, sir. <laughs> I have to see it in order to, to attack it, sir. Listen, Come on, man. Come on, sir. No, I would, right. listen, I would like to knock her down, but I want to <laughs> see that, too. I want to see the woman's face. So this, right. this, this, this is a mess <laughs> on that note. So you feel like it's the, it's the last, do you think we'll ever get to the place where they're like, get down or lay down? Definitely. That's where America's going. And the problem is the people so are not going to go for it. Mean, when I mean get down or lay down, do you think it's like, yo, man, you either take you either take this or or you go. In the name of help, America has been known to do things like that. I'll give you one small example. You have a case uh, by a sister, a young sister, brother. Oh man, this young sister was taken forcibly from her home. A little girl. Her mother was protecting her from getting uh, the psychotropic drugs which are some of the ones that you talked about as far as having side effects, which are really direct effects that are worse than what the drug is supposed to help. So her mother knew this, and she said, I'm not about to put my daughter on that stuff. That stuff is terrible. It's also classified on the DEA's list, the Drug Enforcement Agency's list, as Schedule Two narcotics, meaning they are the same as crystal meth and cocaine. It's just legal. So her mother knew this and said, I'm not about to put, you know, my, my daughter on this. Uh, the, the Marianne Garbaldo case, Marianne Garbaldo. They brought the SWAT team and a tank to this woman's house to come get her daughter. And they said it was medical neglect because she's not giving her daughter these drugs. Brother, if they will do that, this was years ago, mind you, and this happens often. They even knocked down the doors of a couple of different uh, houses and apartments because the parents wouldn't vaccinate their child. This is real. So <laughs> is it possible that they can do that? I, I, I believe America will go to that degree if we allow them to. Or, or, or does it, or is it, or is it 
It's 300 million people. We only need 200 million of you to be vaccinated. And then you're good. Then we can just walk away from all of this. Right. Herd immunity. That's what that's the other thing Dr. Fauci was saying. He said 75 percent. We need roughly 75 percent of the population to be vaccinated in order for herd immunity to take place, et cetera. Meaning in order for everybody else to get healthy, et cetera, the majority of you need to be vaccinated, which from my understanding, uh, you're telling me that in order for you to be healthy, um, I have to take a vaccination right. in order for you to be healthy. OK, so from my understanding, if I take vitamin C, I'm healthy. Right. So that's me. Right. But so in order for you to be healthy, I got to take a shot. That makes no sense scientifically whatsoever. And they try to voice this on people. And, and again, I don't get my information from the from YouTube and stuff, maybe unless there are chemists, et cetera. But I meet with these chemists. I meet with the doctors, the virologists, epidemiologists. I go to the closest to the source as possible, brother. And I get that raw data from them and I have them break it down because the people need to know the truth and they're being manipulated right now with so much noise and so much talk. So they don't know who to trust. So yes, that, that, that point that you brought up with Dr. Fauci is called herd immunity. But the reality is the majority of people overcame the coronavirus and they did it without being given a shot. So what are you talking about? That's just the reality. So we don't need it. It's never been needed. I'll just say this too, because people try to bring up polio and say, well, polio was eradicated through vaccines. That's a lie. Polio was eradicated heavily due to quarantining over in Europe, the same way you just brought up the draconian measures in Australia, et cetera. They knew the true history of what happened in Europe with that situation with polio. The people were told to quarantine. The majority of them quarantined. It lasted for a shorter period of time. They boosted their immune systems. They weren't around each other all the time. They were getting healthier, etc. And that's what got rid of it. It was not massive vaccination. That's not true. Okay. And people got to stop with that lie. Okay, so my question is this. In a society that don't give a damn about nothing, you listen, okay, I was on a television show in 2007 called Celebrity Big Brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In England, yeah. in England, right? Because I'm a star in England. I'm a, I'm a bona fide... They love you, bro. That's celebrity. definitely right. <laughs> I go in there with 13 other, 13 other celebrities. I've been there for 30 days, right? Hmm. Uh, no phone, no computer, no Instagram, no nothing. Just just people. And you got to stay in there for 30 days. I know what it is to quarantine. You could put me in this house with the computer, the, the lights, the, the full water, and I could stay here for another two years if I had to. But <laughs> we people are not going to quarantine the right way. So True. So I think the way they're selling it is since you guys don't want to do it this way, we got to do it this way. Would you mm -hmm. agree with that or disagree with that? That's that's what they're trying to promote it as. Yes, that's how they're trying to promote it. But the overall reality is they don't they don't give a damn about the people. Like they never ever do. If they wanted to, they could literally send out mass high doses of vitamin C. It'll be much cheaper. It will put less of a strain on the American economy. It would actually help. It would help people to get healthier quicker and faster. It would boost the immune systems healthier and faster. That's why the president received vitamin C along with zinc and vitamin D. The people can go outside, get vitamin D, and if it was promoted by all the celebrities, doctors, Dr. Fauci, and if he said, listen, everyone take at least 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day, drink this much water, exercise. Tell the people what you took, Dr. Fauci, because he takes lots of vitamin C. If they did that, you wouldn't need as much quarantining because you're promoting that which will boost the immunity of the people. Everybody gonna say, oh, vitamin C, of course, man. Grandmama took that, mama took that, I take that. I'm gonna, man, give me some oranges, bro. Let's go. I put my oranges in my, you know, hypnotic or kavazi, whatever. You know, I mix that with orange juice. So right. let me just drink the orange juice. Let me, you know, do these different things and that will help just as a quick solution. It all makes more sense, but why are you not telling the people that and you're trying to dress it up? He always comes as an angel of light. The devil always comes as an angel of light in the name of help trying to say that we're here to help you and everyone should quarantine, knowing that you've produced a generation of people in this country and an entire culture that is sport and play. That's all America's about. You know the people are not going to sit still unless it's a game going, unless it's a concert going. You know that. So you try to dress it up as if you care. When it's like, we know they're not going to quarantine, so we're going to talk about quarantine and we're going to wait about two weeks. We're going to know that they're not going to quarantine. They're going to promote that, hey, if you don't quarantine, we're going to have to mandatorily do this. We're going to shut down this, this, this. We know they're not going to do that because we know it's
it's America. We made it this way. Free, free, free. So they were going to go and say, well, you got to get vaccinated. You got to take this. They know what they're doing, bro. It, it is a game. The devil is for tongue. There's a bar kind of taught us this heavily. This enemy does not give a damn about the people, including its own poor white people. They don't care. So the overall reality is those things that we have done to help us to live a healthier life since the beginning of time are the only things with the 100% track record of efficacy. The most successful things, everything dealing from how you eat, what you drink, how you exercise, the vitamins, the minerals, the herbs, all of this stuff, the sweating, the fasting, you know, one meal a day, some people fast for two days, don't eat anything, just drink water. That is one of the most powerful things you could ever do. Mm-hmm. Lord of Prophets did it. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it. That is one of the number one recommended things to do. Fasting, which kills the majority of foreign bacteria, foreign viruses. Like, all of this is what they know. That's why other countries are not showing it. Africa has the, the least amount of cases than anywhere in the world. So it's like, what are you talking about? So it's about business, making money, and the population. That's the main, these are the main things. That's, I mean, that's just, that's just it. So when I debate these scientists, I feel very bad for them because they've been indoctrinated so heavily that they can't make themselves in. They don't know okay. what to think. And it is really sad. Like, come on, y'all, stop with this. I want to be around for my children. You have a higher chance of dying from diabetes, from cancer, from, from being hit by a car. Like, you really have a, and the CDC said that the majority of people who overcame it, overcame it without getting a shot. The majority of people who died, died from other things. And then Corona also jumped on to, but only 6% died from Corona alone. The majority, I mean, like, it's all roads lead to the fact that you don't need the shot. So I'm not going to tell people to take it or not take it. However, I will say we can't trust what this government is putting out, but I will say that the things you know that are natural, the over 14 different solutions that you can use to help yourself, utilize those and see how you feel. See what that does for you. But make your own decision. Just be informed. Make sure you know that you can't sue them. Know what the bears system is. Change your diet. Ask these doctors if they're getting paid for promoting vaccines, bro. Because they are. <laughs> that's another thing, too. They're making money. I mean, well, well, if, when you talk about doctors and getting paid, that's a fact. Because, um, Definitely. you know, the pharmaceutical rep comes, it's almost like, you know, I was in the record industry for many years. As the radio DJ and as well as the record promote, promotion guy who was paid to get the records played. That's right. The pharmaceutical thing is the same way. That's right. Uh, they, they, they have the rep come, they take the doctor out to dinner. If they take the doctor out to dinner, then they probably <laughs> might slide the doctor something. Maybe the doctor wants some head. They get the doctor well, something. They can do a million different things know. to make sure that you take provision. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, there's a million ways. You know, this is the, 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 the pharmaceutical industry in that respect is just like the record industry. It's the same yeah. thing. My final question before. I want you to put down a case, and I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say a word. I just want you to put down a case on why you think people should not take the vaccine. My final question is: for any, you know, for anyone who feels that you're a fraud, that oh, they debunk what you say on Reddit posts or or whatever the case may say may be. What do you say to those people? First thing I'll say is fact check. Fact check. And make sure that where you get your information from is not sponsored by pharmaceutical companies. Fact check me. Then also go and verify and research all the doctors, all the highly credible scientists themselves, the epidemiologists and chemists who the government also said are frauds after they came out speaking against vaccines, but the whole time they weren't speaking against vaccines, they were praised as being the greatest chemist here, one of the greatest virologists here, many opposite. But the moment they spoke out against vaccines, now they're a quack. Now they're no longer legitimate. They're 30 years in the medical field and industry, and the scientific world is null and void. It's only when you talk about vaccines. So don't say I'm a fraud. Say my facts are fraudulent after you verify. And this is the only reason why my name has risen so high is because I have been seen to drop the facts. And that's how we're talking. We, we only speak actual facts. Have I made a mistake before? Maybe slipped or mis, maybe misquoted, misspoke? I, that's definitely happened before. I've definitely done that. So that's not, you know, I have been perfect in my whole life. However, we're taught to speak actual facts and to gain the actual facts and to speak the truth. 
bonds to whom or what. So yeah, I would just say check the facts. You don't have to worry about the person given the knowledge. Just gonna make sure that the, the knowledge is actual, factual, and verified for yourself, and be willing to accept it once you receive it. Don't go into that back and forth with yourself. You know, you see it for yourself. And I, I just, again, I recommend everyone check out the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. If you really want to go there and get the raw data for yourself, it's going to shock you. It's what is going to shock you. Again? Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, also known as the VAERS, V-A-E-R-S, VAERS system. That's a part of the CDC. It is a government reporting system. At all, they're all supposed to report to that of any negative effects. So as of right now, over 501 deaths directly connected to the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine and over 10,700 adverse reactions as of right now have been reported and reported. Okay, so so for somebody to be like, all right, those people died, but look at how many people were saved. We have a question. Those people who were saved, uh, the vast majority of people who overcame corona overcame it without a vaccine. So <laughs> that, that argument is really null and void. The vast majority of those who overcame COVID overcame it without getting a shot. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna step away unless my unless my iPad goes out and it, it, it blacks out because of time, I'll come back. But I want you to just put down the case in your mind and tell the people because the people here why they should not take the vaccine. You got gotcha. you. All right. Turn the uh, and hit the comments, brother, if you don't mind. Oh, turn turn the comments, on. On. comments on. Take the smoke. Turn there we on. go. All right, so uh, first thing, again, I'm honored to be on here. For everyone who's watching, I truly appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure you comment with the different facts that you have already learned about. So the first thing I'll say is vaccines are not the panacea. They are not, they are not the overall cure-all for everything. Doctors, scientists, epidemiologists, chemists, virologists, etc., etc. you all know this to be the absolute fact that the vast majority of those who have overcome sickness had nothing to do with the shots. The vast majority who have overcome diseases, debilit debilitating disorders, had nothing to do with shots. The vast majority of the people who are healthy on this earth came through the birth and the womb of their mother, and the vast majority of them are living a healthy life, and it has nothing to do with shots. So let us make it very, very, very clear. Over $4 billion have been paid out to families who have proven that the shots that, have, that they've been given and that they have given to their children in America have either harmed or killed their child. That is from the vaccine court. That is from the vaccine adverse events reporting system. Let me repeat it one, repeat it one more time. The vaccine court, the bear system, they have paid out, specifically the vaccine court, over $4 billion to families who have proven that vaccines either harmed or killed their child child. Now, if you do not realize by now that when people say that autism and all these different things are not connected to vaccines, that is an absolute lie. It is absolutely connected to it. So that is a lie. I recommend everyone study the documentaries Vaxxed, V-A-X-X-E-D. I recommend everyone watch the documentary Vaxxed 2, V-A-X-X-E-D 2. I recommend everyone watch the documentary called Trace Amounts. I recommend everyone get the book Miller's Review, aka Miller's 400. People say, but there are no studies connecting autism to vaccines. You are a goddamn lie. In the book Miller's Review, it goes over at least 400 studies connecting autism or other debilitating neurological disorders to vaccines. Another thing I want you, I recommend you all study is the documentary called The Truth About Vaccines by Ty Bollinger. The Truth About Vaccines, which is a free six-part docu-series that goes over at least 10 hours of interviews from scientists, pathologists, epidemiologists, chemists, biochemists, doctors, nurses, etc. The Truth About Vaccines by Ty Bollinger. That is on YouTube. You can start watching it today. It will blow your mind. You will learn a lot of information. Another thing I would like for you to all do is to watch the recent debate between Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Alan Dershowitz. Alan Dershowitz, who was the legal advisor to Jeffrey Epstein. Alan Dershowitz, who had an interview where he stated that you have no right to not be vaccinated. You have no, no, no right. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah. 
Yeah. I want we, we we that's one thing that we did not talk about in the interview. The Dershowitz yes. versus uh, John F. Kennedy. Yes. yes. Does the government have the right to say in the in the in the name of health that you gonna take this? That's out. that's literally good job. Very good. Uh, that's actually what they're saying right now is that under the emergency use authorization, the government is able to make certain things legal. That was a dope. I dropped in and get and dropped that in there. The government has a right to say that certain things we're going to rush through and make it to where you can't sue us for it, but you got to take it because we want to help you so much. That's what the emergency use authorization is and that is what the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine are under which is why they are protected which is why if it is proven that it harms anyone which it has if it kills you which it has done to a lot of people you cannot sue them for it under the emergency use authorization so the government is saying that they are helping you and even if that means they have to kill you that is what they'll do to help the remaining people within this country that is not the type of government uh, that I think we should be following, and I think that should be changed. So the next point I will say is... But, but hold, the, hold, 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 hold. Yep. What I was asking is this. Didn't Dershowitz, mm -hmm. didn't Dershowitz argue that the government could say you have to take this? Yes. Yes, that's precisely what he said. It can, is that's that precisely possible? What is that possible? It's, it is possible in a number of ways, believe it or not. If anyone has a birth certificate, it's possible. That's one, because you're, you're legally still a slave technically under the birth certificate system when it comes to America. And because of that, that's one way. The other way is if you sign any documentation underneath the umbrella of being a part of the citizenship of the United States under certain states, etc., they can make it mandatory because you're a citizen of not only this country, but also this state. And if you want to help everyone else to be healthy, et cetera, then they can try to voice that and say, well, this is what needs to be done in order to protect everyone else. You must take this or that. So morally, it is wrong and it is illegal. Uh, in a humane manner, it is illegal, it is wrong, and it violates the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But they try to push other laws to get around it in state by state. States can push against that. So right. the federal government... And the that's, states can push that's probably what's going to happen if they did that. You'd have... A they, they can't do that because a bunch of states would be like, nah, we're not doing this. Okay. That's a fact. Keep talking. Do your thing. Do your thing. Yes, sir. And that specifically is something that uh, another thing that everybody has to understand is once the government gets to a point where they try to say to everyone, well, listen, you got to take this, take that, et cetera, or you can't do this, you can't go here, et cetera. That's the federal government trying to dictate the other 50 state constitutions. But that is not going to work because every state is not going to go along with the dominant state or the federal government or the United States Corporation, which is not the United States government. That's another conversation. But if they decide to disagree, which a lot of states have done, then that state can push away from what the United States government says and they can do whatever it is that they decide to do. Just like Atlanta and the, gov the governor of Georgia did not follow, follow all the rest of the states when it came to making mandatory, did not uh, close or shut down, et cetera. Certain states did, others didn't. So that's the beauty of being a sovereign state, your own state. Now, I'll say uh, the last few things here really quick. The solutions that I believe we all should focus on is changing our diet, how we eat, et cetera. Stop pushing the lie about you're going to die if you don't get a shot. That's not true at all. I've never received one shot. I'm 30 years young one of the healthiest people, but that's because of how I eat, what I drink. Uh, I don't, now mind you, okay, sugar, lots of sugar, lowers the immune system, increases the likelihood of you getting infected with tons of different things. If you drink too much alcohol, that increases your likelihood of getting sick. If you smoke too much, that increases your likelihood of getting sick. If you eat tons of fried foods, dairy, lots of sugars, refined sugars, all this stuff, that messes your body up and increases the amount of mucus and increases the likelihood of you getting sick. All of these different things go towards what is happening as of right now. But if you take things like elderberry syrup, if you take things like sea moss, bladder rack, black seed oil, drink lots of water, if you take high levels of vitamin C, if you take high levels of, let's see, uh, if you take colloidal silver, if you take, uh, there are different oils, other oils, of course, not just black seed oil, but if you make sure you are drinking lots of actual fruit juice, real fruit juice, not just orange juice, but cranberry juice, tart cranberry, not with the sugar, but 
throws the tart cranberry out of the glass. Make sure you are uh, engaged in a lot of vitamin D intake. Getting outside, thank you. Oil of oregano is what I was going to say. Make sure you go outside, get at least an hour of sunlight a day. Vitamin D is not just a vitamin, it is a hormone, meaning it enhances all of the nutrients within the body, allowing your body to increase in whatever nutrition or nutrients it already has inside of it. So the way we eat, how we live is what will change our condition. Fasting is very important. I recommend you get the book, How to Eat to Live, book one and two. That helps you to go through a step-by-step way of doing it. Fat Man Scoop. Visit FatManScoop.com to buy merch.